Alrighty, welcome everyone to day 13 of Advent to Code. I don't really have much more to say other than my base code is here and up and ready. We got 25 seconds until the problem begins. Fingers crossed as always that this today goes well, that I don't misread anything, that I don't you know mess up any of the parts, that I can just do this nice and cleanly and just have a good time with this puzzle. So at any rate, we're almost there to two weeks. Then we have only, what, 12 more days? We're just past the halfway mark. So big, uh, big happy there. Um, three seconds here, so let's see what today's puzzle is. Is... Loads, there we go. Your ferry can make it safely to a nearby port, but it won't... Uh, but it won't get much further. When you call a book another ship... When you call to book another ship, you discover that no ships embark from your port to Vacation Island. You need to get there from your port to the uh, airport. Fortunately, a shuttle bus service is available to bring you from the seaport to the airport. Each bus has an ID number that also indicates how often the bus leaves for the airport. Bus schedules are defined based upon a timestamp that measures the number of minutes since some fixed reference points in the past. Time to zero, every bus has departed part of the seaport. After that, each bus travels to the airport, then various other locations, and then finally returns to the seaport to repeat its journey forever. The time, uh, the time this loop takes a particular bus is also the ID number. If a bus with ID with ID five departs from the seaport at timestamp zero five, okay, and so on. ID, okay. Uh, cool. Uh, you know, it's a puzzle and put consists of two lines. The first line is your estimate of the earliest timestamp you could depart on a bus. The second lists every bus ID that are in service according to the show light company. Um, I'm sure service you decided to ignore them. Uh, to say some. To say time when you arrive, your goal is to figure out the earliest bus you can take to the airport. To be exactly one such bus, for example, suppose you have the following notes. Okay. Here's the earliest timestamp you could depart is 9.39. The bus ID services are 7, 13, 59, 31, 19. Nearest timestamp, those bus IDs depart at the time is marked D. What? <laughs> Wait, so... Okay, so I sort of understand this, but how do we... Wait, why is it notice start at 9.29? Oh, at timestamp zero. Oh. Oh, this is going to be some sort of like the uh, least common factor type thing. So basically we have all these. We just need to figure out which bus leaves the soonest after. Okay. Uh, what's our input going to be here? Uh, I, I'm not looking forward to this big, long import uh, input. So it's going to be... So it's time and then bus IDs, so we just ignore the X's and we go from there, okay. If I can get my import, okay. So, there's gonna be something here of like, I'm sure there's some math here, like at least common factor, at least common multiple, something of that nature would work here. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I know this. The input's gonna be something like that. Wow. So we can. Oh yeah. Of course, because it's gonna be really big number. So again, it's something of like a least common multiple, least common factor. Something is like that. So we're gonna have to do is we're going to. So let me parse this out. So we're gonna have to do. Um, let's do a long. Um, leave time is as a long parse long input strings get zero. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is then we're going to then parse this line in, and we're actually gonna split it. So we're gonna go string um, bus IDs. It's gonna be equal to input strings get one, and then split on that. And actually, it's go ahead and um, let's let's let's, let's make this go a little fancy here. Let's do a new array list. Onto this. Can I, can I stream like this? Is this. Alright, you can't go from. Right, you can't go from that. Okay. Never mind. Okay, so let's actually let's do this a little bit different. So we'll still do our list here. Uh, these are ints, um, so integer bus IDs, and it's going to be IDs. It's going to be equal to a new array list here, and we're going to do is we're going to do for string ID in this 
we're going to first check that ID uh, does not equal this. So assuming it does not equal an X, then we'll go ahead and do bus IDs, bus IDs, add uh, integer parsent, and it's going to be an ID. So let's go ahead and put all of our stuff into this bus ID. So now we only have the available to one. It has to be like a at least common multiple or something. Or it's because it's going to be the first one after. Um, that's going to be the first. What's, what's the easiest way to do this? The first bus after. What if I get a calculator here? So what if I do, so in this case, 939 divided by seven. And then we just want the decimal here. Um, so minus one, three, one, one, three, four. And if we do times seven, we get one. That's not. This is happening one before. That's one before. Uh, well, we want this to be one after. Uh, Cause it's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so what's like the, the best way This bus you could take is bus ID 59. It doesn't appear until timestamp 944. So you would need to wait minus five equals five minutes before it departs. So multiplying the bus ID by the number of minutes you need to wait gives you, okay, so that's just our answer. So, what if we do that? So then we get 135 times seven. So what if we do assuming they're not in full integer number. So if they are if it is a full integer number, that means it falls it right on it. But assuming we would do nine we could do it this way. We could do nine three nine divided by in this case seven to give us that round up to one three five. And then we can just for all of them, so we can do like 939 divided by 13, round up to 73 times 13. All right, I think this is gonna be the best way to do it. So let's go ahead and do this way. So now we have these bus IDs. So now we're gonna go through each of these bus IDs. So we're gonna go integer um, ID, and it's going to be in the bus IDs. And what we're gonna do here is we're going to do the um, leave time divided by the ID. And we're gonna do a math dot um, seal of this. So I'm, I'm, we're gonna assume um, that the remainder of this, so if the remainder of this is not zero, we're good. Then we're gonna do this math here. Otherwise, if it is, what we can go ahead and do is we can just do a lap and we can give it, um, this This probably won't happen, but just in case it somehow does, um, it's going to be zero, right? It'll just be lap zero. In case it somehow happened, I doubt it'll happen, but all right, there we go. So now we'll get the ceiling of this, and then we're gonna multiply the ceiling of this by, um, by the ID, right? Cause then, yes. So now we have, um,
Oh, int, um, just call it seal. So now we have the one above this. We need to cast this to an integer because we only want is integer. So now we have the number above this. And then what we need to do is we need to find the smallest one of these after. So we need, um, actually they should be long, shouldn't they? Just in case. Um, and we're just gonna check if uh, seal is less than smallest. Go ahead and then set. Oh, we also need bint uh, small ID. And this is going to be equal to math dot max. Nope, math and not math. Integer max value. Sorry. So in this case, we're gonna do that. So we're gonna do then smallest equals seal and small ID is gonna be equal to ID. Okay, and then after this runs in theory, now we should have these values so we can just call our lap, which lap is going to be, what did it say? It's going to be um, the smallest minus um, leave time times the bus ID, right? I think that's what it is. All right, oops, not small ID, sorry. Let's run this. I think this will be our Fast. Let's see. What is this gonna give us? I don't have a ton of hope, but maybe I somehow just did it right. This this question wasn't so far. It's not been too bad to program. It just was a nightmare for me to get started with and figure out. I got it right. All right. I like it. I'm happy with that. I understand that it just took me a while to figure out what this meant. Okay. The show company is running a contest, one gold coin for anyone that can find the earliest timestamp such that the first bus ID departs at the time and each subsequent listed bus ID departs at the subsequent minute. Um, so the first line is no longer relevant. For example, suppose you have the list of ID above. An X in the schedule means that there are no con uh, constraints on what bus ID must depart at that time. This means that you're looking for the earliest timestamp called T such that bus ID 7 departs at T, plus the ID 13 departs one minute after T, uh, prevents four minutes after timestamp T. Wait, why? Oh, we just want to find them where they happen in order? Oh. Oh, well, so, um, uh, it makes up a bus east departs at that, seven minutes after T, it, this is fine. The only requirement is that on the minute, is that on that minute is the bus ID 19 then departs and it does. Okay. Um, so we have to find where all of these fit within these time frames. Okay. This is definitely an LCM or like not, it's one of those. I don't know like that math is, I'm not the strongest with that type of math. So it's gonna be a really large number. going to be a really, really large number. Um, this one's gonna take me some thinking. Um, okay, so I've spent actually like the last hour trying to get part two. I have the whole thing kind of recorded, but in the end it came down to part two, you have something called the Chinese remainder theorem. I don't know, it's, I, at this point, it's silly. I don't really want to look into it and try to learn it. Um, it's apparently a, not a complex math, but it's complex enough that I don't want to try and learn it and then implement it in a night. So I'm going to just call part two a fail. I've, I got the answer in the end. I was able to use someone else's code to figure out how you generate it, but then I just dumped it into an online Chinese random, or Chinese remainder theorem calculator. So like, I didn't actually do that calculation myself, but, I'm going to leave part two technically today as a fail for me that I couldn't do it in my own code. Um, 
So I will still explain part one, but just know that is why there is no part two. And that's why I'm not explaining part two is because I don't know enough about this to explain how this works and what it does. Um, all I know is that it leverages the, um, I think it's the greatest common denominator, I think, or LCM, one of the two, it leverages one of those to kind of do it is that's how it was going to do it until I realized, hey, they're offset of one. I don't know how to deal with these offsets, but anyways, I'm gonna be off track. So for part one, how we solve this is literally we loaded all these all these integers in. We have our kind of initial, um, if I get back to um, day 13 here, we have our kind of initial, uh, our first time here hit. So what we do is we load all these numbers in, we grab all the indexes here, and then we go through and we calculate the smallest um, number that occurs after our um, initial like start time that we want, that we are arrival time. And the way we do this is we simply just take our leaving time, we divide it by the bus ID to get the um, division of like how many times it goes into it, but then we seal it. That way we get the first time this ID occurs after the point of leave. And then we just check in and find the smallest Actually, I probably described this terribly because this is like I did this an hour ago and my brain is still stuck on part two. So anyways, sorry for the shorter video. Again, I, I failed the part two. Hopefully tomorrow's goes better. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys tomorrow for day 14. Peace out.